Hey guys, we're back with another workout and another voiceover and I actually do have Josh with me here to do the voiceover with me even though he is not the training partner I am with in this video. What up, what up? So we are starting off with hip thrusts. I did a few warm-up sets with a 25 pound plate on each side and then I elevated to the 45 pound plate. Um, this is Brett doing hip thrusts. Sick moves in the back. Yeah, I was um, genuinely scared I was gonna get hit, but that is, that is okay. Um, so for hip thrusts, you'll see that Brett and I have different foot placements. I like to keep my feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart, and I like to keep my toes pointed out just because I feel it more in my glutes when I do it that way. And I'm also looking down, so this helps to um, get rid of any strain on your neck so you don't injure your neck. So as you'll see here, Brett is looking down. He's actually doing these perfectly. He's coming up to 90 degrees in his knees and he's actually letting his upper body move along with the movement. This is good so it's not creating an arch in the lower back and he has a single plane of movement. It's really good for building the booty. Yeah. Very good. I like how you're just, you're just like no comment. Well, you, you don't. This, you you know? don't. Yeah, but. They want to see my ugly face. <laughs> And then um, here I'm just doing a finisher. So I did, I went back to my warm up weight and then I did 20 reps. And I did not hold the pause at the top. I mainly just did these for power and speed. I usually do these at the end of all of my heavy sets. This is a really good angle, Brett. <laughs> Sumo kettlebell deadlifts. I like these because with my feet, I keep my feet wider than shoulder width and I keep my feet pointed out. I can really feel the stretch in my glute ham tie-in. You keep your knees bent slightly, so it's essentially a hinge with soft knees, so you don't want to have your knees locked out at any point. Kind of though... similar to like a Romanian deadlift. Yeah. So just with a wider foot placement. Yeah, and the whole time you want to maintain a flat back, so you want to go until the point where you feel the stretch in your hamstrings, and anything past that, your back starts to take over. So this movement is just for your hamstrings, you don't want it to turn into like a, a back movement. You want to drive with your hips too. When you're, when you're going back, you really push your hips backwards, and as you're squeezing to the top you can notice you're really driving your hips forward yeah you're so squeezing I'm, those glutes at the top yeah so i'm squeezing my glutes at the top at every single rep oh my god come on look at that booty <laughs> it's like not fair it's so big brett it's because you're ginger <laughs> Uh, these are single leg um, kettlebell deadlifts. I like these because as my coach has said in a previous video, um, unilateral work allows for any imbalances to become apparent in the body and it allows you to focus on one side of the body at a time. So same thing with the sumo deadlifts, you're keeping a soft knee and you're basically just hinging your, your hips back and then flexing each cheek at the top. I've done these before, they're very hard. Yeah, I make it's Josh a, do these. It's a humbler exercise for sure. You think you can do a lot of weight, and then you actually do the movement, and uh, you're using little pink dumbbells before you know it. Yeah. <laughs> I found these were really good for the glute ham tie-in when I started to implement these into my training. And these are Bulgarian split squats. These are one of my personal favorite exercises. My training partner showed me these. They are absolutely deadly. Um, if you're a meathead like Brett is, you sort of want something to hold on to because... It was really hard for Brett to keep his balance and then, as you'll see here, I'm fine with the balance. I don't need something to hold on to. Um, it's a little upper body heavy, so... <laughs> you're just hating on Brett. <laughs> Jesus. Are you jealous that I worked out with someone else? I love Brett.
and then we did lying hamstring curls and the whole time I was basically yelling at Brett to keep his hips pushed into the pad because once you start to lift your hips as he just did at the top of the movement um, it's no longer just a hamstring movement it becomes like so to use like your glutes and a lot of lower back yeah and now you're hating on Brett I'm, Brett. No, I'm just. Poor Brett. I'm not hating on Brett. Yeah, I'm just you want to. You want to think form. about driving your knees down to the pad and then keeping your hips locked in place. Yeah. As Tessa is doing here. Thank you, Josh. Except for when she hits failure, but that's. When I start to hit failure, my my form <clears throat> starts to break a little bit, and you'll see that my butt starts to lift off the pad, and I'm using my lower back to kind of get the weight up. A good it, way to help, like, get rid of that too is. If you kind of think about locking your shoulders down um, in place, it kind of helps your, your upper body stay a little more rigid so your hips can stay down into that pad. Yeah, and then at this point, um, Brett was like, do two more, and I was like, no, I can't. So that's why my butt started to lift like that off the pad. Two more. And then we finished with glute abductors. So you can do these leaning back, sitting upright, or leaning forward. I choose to do them a little bit more forward and Brett does them sitting more upwards. It's basically just, it's dependent on your body's biomechanics and where you feel it most in your glutes. Um, we did four sets of 20 for this. This is more so like a power movement for me. So I don't, I don't go really heavy. I just go light and then I make sure every single rep is powerful and I hold the the um, contracted position for two seconds each rep. So as you'll see here, I am holding it, and then I'm immediately going back into the movement. One, two, okay, good. I, it was two sure. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to the end of our booty day workout. So thank you all for joining. And geez, Josh, you barely said anything this time. Well, I'm not in it, you know? Not much to say. Yeah, but now you are. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, I will see you guys in the next one.